Hello, hello, Tyler Bryan here. I hope everything's going well. Uh, super interesting release today. Originally spotted by Ahmad uh, through as you know, scrolling through the Twitter feed and and what uh, I saw, you know, speech to image, which something uh, if you know me, I've been interested in. But what that then linked to was an OpenAI uh, tweet about uh, a neural net called Whisper that they've released, and this is an automatic speech recognition system trained on over 680,000 hours of multilingual, uh, multilingual data, uh, multitask data, and it enables transcription, multiple languages, uh, and then a translation into English and. Uh, there are some fantastic claims about the performance of these models. Uh, and then obviously uh, sort of an interesting breakthrough um, because it was released as an open source um, uh, sort of uh, release. And so you can you know view this directly in GitHub. You can see I was actually doing as far and up in uh, Google Collab here. I got part way through, but didn't get through everything here and started into this video instead. So that's a better use of my time. And so they, you know, they document this entire thing it's directly on uh, the OpenAI website, so all these links will be included. And then what's super interesting here is they have a couple links, uh, one of them being speed talking, so I'll play this here for a sec. Station, restaurant, service station, and more. Perfect pocket portables to take any place. And there are many miniature places to play with, and each one comes with its own special edition, micro machine vehicle, and fun fantastic features that miraculously move. Great. So between, uh, there's some background noise, first of all, in that, and then also some, you know, some pretty incredible uh, speed that is uh, being said. Uh, basically, the the sort of um, reason this, this was showed as an example is that accuracy is really strong, uh, that this system can handle accents, it can handle background noise, it can handle technical language, it can handle speed. And generally, there are some sort of benchmarks comparisons with, um, you know, some pretty standard speech recognition systems um, that it then matches or even uh, exceeds. And, and so when you talk about, um, you know, basically how it is a relatively uh, simple end-to-end uh, -end approach. So you can see here, um, so implemented as an encoder-decoder transformer, split into 30 seconds chunks, and then converted into a spectrogram and passed to an encoder. And then that is uh, trained to predict the corresponding text caption, and then has some special tokens that direct the single model to foreign tasks, uh, such as language and information, phrase level timestamps, multilingual speech transcription, and then uh, the English uh, speech translation. So they've got the entire thing laid out, if you're listening and not watching this, and, uh, and you know, really nicely uh, laid out. OpenAI obviously has, you know, incredible um, technical expertise on their team. I'm super you know, interested to hear uh, as more and more sort of transcription engines get built, the, you know, the capacity to be able to do that um, becomes more prevalent. Uh, there will be, uh, you know, more and more applications of this technology. I have a company right now called Speak AI. We work on, you know, speech to text and then the analysis of that language. So this is obviously, you know, interesting uh, to th through that company lens. And then, and there's a ton of companies, you know, building both now open source versions and then private versions, whether that's obviously the big cognitive services, Microsoft, Amazon, Google. Google, and then, you know, even startups, Deep Graham, and all this wonderful, uh, you know, you know, sort of development and innovation all around speech recognition, uh, extraction, translation, which are huge uh, sort of, um, you know, boosts for how we can process information as people. And obviously, so much of this happens uh, in speech. And uh, the better the transcription, the better the accuracy, uh, the quicker that it comes back, the cheaper it is to do it. All of these have you know, huge downstream consequences for how these technologies are applied to our life, whether that's personal applications, which I think we see a lot for accessibility, but I think there's more and more coming for just sort of personal uh, utility and then I would say even entertainment. And then obviously business applications, and there's you know very sort of apparent ones like contact centers and things like that, but there's also entire new layers of sort of voice interaction that are being built through these systems. So definitely... Uh, uh, a little bit of a you know breakthrough and I'm interested to hear like from Sam Altman um, I should know his exact role I'm going to pop up his uh, Twitter profile um, but you know a leader here at OpenAI formerly from uh, Y Combinator and sort of talks about how open source and cliffs clip, which is the sort of uh, video generation uh, model that was open source that then has led to an explosion in sort of generative AI, has, you know, created a lot of amazing work by the ML community. He's saying, you know, he hopes the same thing uh, happens here. So uh, I think this is, you know, fairly recent, 105 p.m., uh, I, you know, sort of jumped as I saw this news, wanted to dive a little bit deeper into it. So these are sort of my first uh, impressions. I think I got a couple uh, duplicate links uh, in here. And then as I jump, you know, into this page, you've got that, you've got the link to the actual paper itself. You can view the code. Uh, this is what I have in this GitHub. And you can see that some really interesting, uh, you know, a couple pieces here. So nine models of different sizes and capabilities uh, summarized. So you can see here, what is an English uh, English only model versus a multilingual? Most are, uh, actually all of them are multilingual. It was released just today. And then there are some sort of uh, 
not disclaimers, but sort of messages and documentation around um, how this is being how this is being used, the training data. So six, uh, 680,000 hours, um, corresponding transcripts collected from the internet, 65% of that data is English, uh, and then roughly 18% is non-English uh, audio and transcripts. So uh, a little bit of a breakdown there. Um, there's been some other systems that have, um, you know, primarily focused on English, and that's been, you know, an opportunity, but also a challenge as there's so many different languages in the world, and those are very important, and uh, you don't want to disregard those. And then this is, you know, still a relatively small sample size of non-English um, being used to train this model. But overall, it's nice to see that that was uh, included in there. And then talks a little bit about performance, the limitations of the system. Uh, you know, generally, um, generally, these are pretty standardized uh, limitations of speech recognition systems. Generally, you know, if you can't hear us, if you can't decode what someone says, uh, you know, the machine's gonna have a hard time deco decoding that. And until we sort of combine sort of computer vision, uh, speech recognition, uh, and then sort of all the sort of denoising and everything compatible that servers and machines are capable of, this is gonna continue to be a problem. But uh, it seems like there are, um, you know, some breakthroughs in here and uh, that there is a higher accuracy, although it performs evenly across, uh, unevenly across languages, which is, you know, interesting and sort of expected depending on the, you know, based on the breakdown that they've showed and basically saying that, you know, different dialects, different accents uh, may have higher uh, word error rate, which word error rate is a common sort of metric to understand the accuracy of these systems. Generally, again, all these companies would benchmark across each other and that's how they sort of show that their technology is, you know, at a better place and at a certain level. Uh, you know, that word error rate, even a small couple points uh, can have a huge impact if you're processing a ton of minutes. So that's a reason why, uh, you know, it's so focused on and is actually a really strong standardized um, way to understand how accurate is the system. Generally, it's like take an audio file, uh, video file, whatever, transcribe it, and then uh, have a real person come and then uh, clean that, you know, basically uh, edit that transcript up fully, see how many changes there were, and then that helps you produce the word error rate. There's also sort of the broader app implications, and I talked a little bit about this, but what they also talk about is that, yeah, there's, uh, aw there's awesome positive impact on sort of accessibility tools that's possible here, but we also have possibly some negative ones, which is more people get access to speech recognition. We're seeing the adoption of this in technology systems, and, you know, it could create capable uh, surveillance systems. Um, I think anyone who is, you know, understanding information process and data collection knows that um, that's being done, you know, everywhere. And obviously, if you apply that to speech, there's just sort of another thing uh, to consider there. And so, again, this will only get more accurate, it will only get quicker, it will only get more affordable, it will not just be, uh, you know, retroactive analysis, it'll be real time transcription. Um, right now, Whisper cannot be used for real-time transcription, so that's something um, to consider. Uh, but I'm sure as they sort of iterate on this technology, continue to build it, continue to grow, uh, that's a you know a huge opportunity um, with speech recognition to apply it in real time, and then do you know real-time extraction or um, you know pushing of task or all these different applications that come out in real time. So got the paper here. I'm not going to dive uh, too deep into that. There was one other sort of section I think that I had a note on, which is uh, basically Python um, should be compatible with 3.7 or, or later. This is what I, you know, dumped into the uh, dumped into the Google Collab. One thing broke on mine, so I didn't get to didn't get as far as I hoped. But uh, I basically have the core part, and I'll revisit that just to see what the results are and test a couple different systems. And love testing different systems under different use case. Put some stress on it, and you know, uh, shout out uh, to Hugging Face. Uh, you know, getting a lot of love. They just got a shout out on Google here as well too. So I'm um, doing some incredible work with Transformers and this, you know, incredibly uh, technical uh, organization that continues to open source technology and allow this innovation to happen as well as FFmpeg uh, Python, which is I've linked. So hugging face here and then FM, uh, FMmpeg, uh, which is a widely used library capable of so many uh, amazing things, something that we use here uh, at Speak AI often. So I think that's about it for me. Uh, that's As I look at my notes, uh, that's it. I would love to hear, you know, are you exploring this? Have you done any tests? What do you think? What do you think of OpenAI being the one released, uh, you know, one releasing this, obviously, uh, and doing some amazing work, but then also some skepticism uh, around it. Why do they open source this versus not open sourcing other things? Uh, what are uh, those other things to, for, consider, for us to consider. Obviously, I love this stuff very much and uh, have been a huge follower, believer, implementer, and user of speech recognition. So this is an exciting release uh, along those lines and the innovation will continue uh, to come here. So if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, all those good things. I've been Tyler Brad and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.